Scientists might say it's not real in the sense of causation, but in terms of the phenomenology of our emotions, it's absolutely real. It's mm -hmm. absolutely real. Hmm? You may as well just push them under that bus yourself. Yeah. But that's what you feel about <laughs> it, isn't it? Yeah, I did for him. Yeah. Might as well drive the bus. It wouldn't have been for that argument. The way in which, again, for an artist, anyone engaged in communication, the way in which the slightest gesture, a tone, a musical note, can communicate emotion from one place to another is, I'll give you an example. Um, if you really want to alienate somebody, look at your fingernails when you're speaking. Mm. It horrifies people. So if somebody, someone comes to your door, you know, it's so someone you, it's like a bailiff and they're asking for money. <laughs> yeah? So you just want to get rid of them. <coughs> Carry on speaking, but as you're speaking, and, like, I've just told you I'm going to do this, and you will feel, I'm going to alienate my audience immediately here. <laughs> Even though people know you're doing it, if, if you look at your nails <laughs> while you're speaking, people feel like you know, that you are less than the dirt beneath. The dirt beneath the nails is more interesting than you. Now, I'm telling you I'm doing this, and it's annoying. If you, if you want to end, end a relationship quickly, do that while you're having sex. Yeah? It's, it's over there and then. Yeah? Poof, gone. Yeah? Yeah, these are occult techniques. Yeah? But this is this how communication happens. Now, artists like Robert were absolutely fascinated by this sort of thing. How can you, with a, a single line or a gesture, can a pentacle, can a shape do something? Of course it can. Of course it can. Mm -hmm. So just get over the word magic. Mm -hmm. Mark, can I just ask you, I uh, probably won't be able to express it terribly well, but um, the, we know the natural shapes in nature, you know, talk about the shapes of the shell and the mm. uh, triangles and, and so on and so forth. Um, and the shapes that are involved in the natural world, like the shapes of diamonds and, mm. and so on and so forth, stones and shells, um, these have been around for a very long time, these just natural things in nature, uh, leaves and so on and so forth. And <coughs> We've been around for a very, very, very long time. Mm. Um, and do you not feel that in some way that those those very basic things are the things that um, um, give us a feeling of harmony when we see them and a feeling of, of, of serenity almost? Mm. So that when you look at a painting or a, 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 a representation of, of whatever, man-made representation, whether it be a, you know, a gothic cathedral or a painting, um, it, it gives us that, that serene sort of feeling in our mind. Um, because we've been around them a very long time, those basic shapes, mm. the basic shapes in nature, um, and so, 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 so long, in fact, that I think that our brain has, 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 um, has sort of evolved um, and so that it, it receives these natural shapes, and it pleases us. I I, I, I agree. I agree. That probably yeah, going is going back a very very a deep, deep, time. A deep 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 biological history. On a very very deep yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember a biological <coughs> philosopher. It wasn't Rupert Sheldrake. It was a philosopher of biology talking about this in terms of evolutionary biology. And I was half convinced by this that because we are essentially very closely related to fruitivorous apes. You know, the orangs, the chimps, the gorillas, so on and so forth. Yeah. And we can argue about you know, it please them the, 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 the details of how we're related, but we're clearly more related than we are to jellyfish or, you know, or starfish or whatever. Um, that one of the things which would have been most important for us in, in, in the long, dark, nasty years growing up before we developed electricity and cookers and kebab shops and so on and so forth, is that knowing when things are ripe. Mm -hmm. So a sense of colour, colour vision would be incredible over periods of millions of years. Colour vision becomes incredibly important for us. Whereas for a shark, colour vision is probably neither here nor there. For a deep sea octopus, it's not going to see light from one year to the next. But uh, for for sight hunters, who uh, a lot of our carbohydrate, well, all of our carbohydrate comes from plants. Yeah, knowing when things are ripe and edible and digestible means that the ability to distinguish. Minute gradations of colour. Yeah. That potato is green. It will give me stomach ache. Yeah. 
However, that apple is green, but it's a different type of green. That's an edible green, yeah, not a poisonous green.